I want to talk to you about the personal nature of the Holy Spirit and how he can actually be grieved. The Holy Spirit is a person. By that, I don't mean that he's a human being. I mean that there's a personal nature to him. The Holy Spirit is more than a force or a feeling. He's a friend. You can know the Holy Spirit as a friend, but you must learn to walk in obedience to, in surrender to, the person of the Holy Spirit. Because as I'm going to show you, he can be grieved by the way we behave. John chapter 15, verse 26 says, but I will send you the advocate, the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the father and will testify all about me. Here the scripture calls him a he, John 16, 13 and 14. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me and he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. The Bible refers to the Holy Spirit as a who and not a what. First John chapter five, verses six through eight says this, and Jesus Christ was revealed as God's son by his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the spirit who is truth confirms it with his testimony so we have these three witnesses, the spirit, the water, and the blood, all three agree. Now, at this point, someone might be wondering, well, if the Holy Spirit is a person, then why do we call him the Holy Spirit? Well, that's his title. We also say the Father and the Son, but the Father, we understand, is still a person, and the Son, we understand, is still a person. So the Holy Spirit, that's his title. He's still a person. Furthermore, the scripture shows us that the Holy Spirit has a will. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11 says, But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. I used to imagine that the Holy Spirit was just a mist floating in the air or something about the atmosphere, perhaps just a power or an influence. But the Holy Spirit is a person. He can be known, and in fact, he desires a friendship with you. Friends of the Holy Spirit walk in boldness when they evangelize. They pray sincerely. They worship with depth. They read the scripture with understanding because the Holy Spirit is right there aiding them in their understanding of the scripture. They overcome sin. They love others. They demonstrate the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I want to be a friend of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can speak. Acts chapter eight, verse 29 says, the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. The Holy Spirit is referred to as the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse 17 says, now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So he's a personal being, a third member of the Trinity. He is God and he can be known by you. God, the father, is seated upon the throne. God the Son sits at his right hand and the Holy Spirit dwells in you. The Holy Spirit can be known on a personal basis while you're here upon the earth. He has a will. He has a mind. He is a person that can be known and he walks with you 24-7, day by day. He'll guide you. He'll protect you. He'll correct you. And think about this. What greater advantage is there in life than having the presence of the Holy Spirit abide with you? He sustains you and he empowers you unto holy living. Now, Ephesians 4.30 says something quite powerful. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, the scripture says, he has identified you as his own guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Let me read that again, and I want you to really listen. I know I just read it, but please, we must learn to meditate on the word. And meditation is simply repetition in thought, not in the new age sense, which says empty your mind, but in a biblical sense, which says fill your mind with God's word. Ephesians 4.30, and do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit. So he has feelings. And grieve not the spirit, some translations say. By the way you live, your actions can grieve him. The way you behave 
can either please him or hurt him. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Now, this is different, again, than the everywhereness of the Holy Spirit, the omnipresence of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we understand. In a greater sense, the Holy Spirit is everywhere at all times. He's omnipresent. But the way he dwells with the believer is not the way that he dwells with the unbeliever. The way he dwells with the believer is a special localized influence that he has over body, soul, and spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him, the Bible says. Many have asked, well, how can the Holy Spirit, who is holy, dwell with sinful man? How can he dwell with a believer, say, who's struggling with sin? Well, that's the power of the atonement. That's the power of justification. That's what it means to be redeemed. He's redeeming you. It's because of the blood of Jesus. It's because when God looks at the son on the cross, he sees your every mistake. But when he looks at you, he sees Christ's perfection. That's what it means to stand in Christ. That's what it means to receive the grace of God. Because we put our faith in the Lord Jesus, now the Holy Spirit can abide with us. That's how he can remain with us, even though sometimes we make mistakes. Now, that's not an encouragement to go on sinning, but it is an encouragement so that you know that he's going to remain to help you get it right. He doesn't stay and say, just keep sinning, live however you want. No, in fact, when we sin, we grieve him. We grieve his heart. It breaks his heart when we decline prayer. It breaks his heart when we neglect the word. It breaks his heart when we refuse to surrender certain areas of our lives. It breaks his heart when we hold on to unforgiveness. It breaks his heart when we participate in slander and and gossip and division. It breaks his heart when we do not demonstrate the fruits of the spirit. Oh, but my friend, remember this. If he loves us enough to be grieved by our disobedience, hear me now, please. If he loves us enough to be grieved by our disobedience, then that means that he loves us enough to be pleased when we surrender. Here's something I've learned about the Holy Spirit. He loves when you choose him over other things. When you're praying, for example, and your phone begins to ring and you decline that call, you put down that phone, you say, no, right now I'm with you. Do you know that that pleases him? I, I've literally sensed it when I'm praying, when I'm reading, when I'm devoting time to the Lord and distractions try to make their way in. I've literally sensed his overflowing joy when I reject the distractions. We break his heart when we go all throughout the day without even acknowledging his presence. The Holy Spirit is not clingy. He understands that we're busy. He understands that we have things to do. He understands that there are certain things that we have to do in order to exist in this world. He gets that he's not clingy. But to live your life without even acknowledging his presence, that grieves his heart. When we aren't grateful for what God has given to us, When we lack gratitude toward the heavenly father, the Holy Spirit is grieved. When we come against fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, the Holy Spirit is grieved. When we refuse to apologize to our spouse, when we know we're wrong, the Holy Spirit is grieved. When we choose the entertaining over the spiritual, the mundane over the heavenly, When we choose the here and the now above the then and the there, the heavenly realm, we grieve the Holy Spirit. When we keep the perspective of just earthly mentalities, instead of seeing things through heaven's eyes, we grieve the Holy Spirit. When we obey the word, we do as God says, we bring joy to his heart. If he loves you enough to be grieved by your disobedience, then he loves you enough to be pleased by your obedience. I don't know about you, but I don't want to grieve the precious Holy Spirit. I want to pray with you right now. And I want to guide you in a prayer of repentance. And I want to pray over you 
that you would know what it is to share in friendship with the Holy Spirit. So, Father, I thank you that you are gracious and merciful. I thank you that you are kind and loving. And I pray right now, Lord, for that one receiving this. And I ask you to begin to draw them to higher places. Help them to live in a way that pleases you. I want you to say this. Say, Holy Spirit. Say it out loud. Say, Holy Spirit. I want you. Say it. Say, I want you to feel at home in me. Does he feel at home in you? Or do you live in such a way that it grieves his heart? Now ask God's forgiveness. He's merciful, he's kind, I'm telling you. He'll forgive you. Ask him. And now turn from that and make a commitment in your heart today to not grieve the precious Holy Spirit. Father, help them do it. Be their constant reminder. Give them grace and power to walk as you've called them to walk. Holy Spirit, let your power flow. Wow, we give you the honor and the praise. And the church said, amen. If you've been watching us maybe for a few weeks, maybe you just discovered this ministry and the ministry is helping you, the prayer, the word, the events, the content, whatever aspect of the ministry is blessing you, I want to ask you something. Will you today help the ministry on its mission? Look, the gospel is free, but the means to deliver the gospel on a mass scale, that's what takes resources. To do media on a mass scale, to do events all around the world as we do them, that takes resources. And we don't charge for the videos. We don't charge registration fees for our event. Freely we receive, so freely we give. We do it the biblical way, which is, to have faith in God, to touch the hearts of his people, to give free will offerings to help the work. So I'm asking you right now to give a single donation or to become a monthly ministry supporter. To give a single donation, just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. To become a monthly ministry supporter, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. I appreciate your support. Thank you for that. And just know that everything you give is helping us to continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world in the power of the Holy Spirit. And until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God.